Welcome to a pretty difficult 5-wheel combination cable lock. I received this lock from a viewer because she forgot the combination and was unable to decode the lock herself. When I received this lock I immediately started trying to decode it and it took me quite some time, maybe half an hour, to get it open. So it's pretty tricky. That's why I don't want to show you a decoding in this video, but I will show you what tricks this lock has and what general methods you can apply for such kind of lock to decode it. So stay tuned. And by the way, you can see it's open. <laughs> All right, so when you decode these kind of locks, you will try to tension the mechanism by pulling the two parts apart and under tension turn the wheels. You choose the wheel that shows the most resistance, turn it until you feel a click, feel a give on the parts here, or you get stuck at the number, then you know you have the right number for the first wheel that you worked on, and then you continue with the other wheels. Um, first thing to note here is that these, these two cables come out at an angle, so when you naturally pull the two parts apart, you angle it like like so. And that means if you don't pay attention, you do not get the best feedback. So you need really need to concentrate to pull it straight, not to pull it like this. And believe me, when you work on this lock for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and so on and so forth, you forget. You naturally just do like this and then you um, lose feedback. Mm, next thing is that this lock is made really precise and if you are away a little bit from your number then uh, it's game over. So you lose all the feedback. So here you can see it's it's open. When you when I turn away just a little bit it's it's already locked and you have to be very precise. Now it's good. That's the number. If I turn it a little bit, it's it's already off. So the gaps uh, in these inner wheels and the teeth on the bolt uh, match really close. So if you decode the lock and you say, ah, okay, that's that's a good number, that's a good number, that's a good number, and if you work on this wheel, for example, and you move away uh, just a little bit from from one of the other wheels. Um, then it's already not working anymore. So you have to really be precise. Um, that's the second, uh, the second <laughs> hint or second note. Um, and then what makes this lock uh, very difficult to decode is that it has false gates. So usually you have um, a normal locks or in, uh, in a simpler locks you have one gate, one opening in the inner wheel. Um, I can show you that with a little light. Um, that is uh, wide enough for the for these uh, for these teeth to to go through, but this lock has false gates and it has false gates in two different ways. So first, I will show you the usual false gate. <laughs> so here you can see the slot; it's currently open, and uh, the bolt can slide in. Um, I I will now turn the the first wheel. Um, I will change the setup so that I can hold the light and turn the wheel at the same time. Uh, it's free now, you can see the slot, so the bolt can slide through. When I turn the first wheel, it's blocked now, and it's blocked, and it's blocked, blocked, and blocked, and here you can see that's a false gate. That's um, an opening that it's wide enough so that the bolt catches with the, with the teeth but it's not wide enough so that it would slide through. And this gives you a false impression that this wheel is now at the right uh, number, but it's not. It's on the um, on a false gate position. And every wheel has two gates, one true gate and one false gate of, of the kind that I just showed you. Um, and there, there's another type of false gate which is much more difficult to to work with and I have to change my setup to, to show it to you. So here you can see again inside the lock and it's currently the true gate that we see. I turn the wheel 
and you can see that the next position has an undercut. Uh, it's right, right here. It has an undercut, and the next doesn't have this undercut, and then it has an undercut again. Hope you can make this out here at the at the change uh, to the false gate. You can see the change of undercut and no undercut, and again here it changes to an undercut and no undercut, undercut, no undercut. And this makes the the two parts uh, come apart and come together for each number, and it's uh, it's locked at every second position. I will show you um, how this looks like. So here is at the right number. I turn it away, and I pull it apart and turn it, um, and it's hard to turn away from nine. I push it together and turn it away a little bit and go to zero and it's easy to go from zero to one and it's locked in one. So at every second position we have this undercut where the two parts come apart a little bit and it's hard to turn away under tension. So you have to push it in a little bit, you have to turn it a little bit and then you can turn it over the position that does not have the undercut and then it falls in the undercut again. And you can really feel it how it comes apart and uh, comes together. And this makes it really cumbersome to decode this lock because you always have to pull in and pull out. And yeah, it's you have to have it on a, on a certain um, tension level, for example. Then you can try to um, have a continuous uh, movement on the wheel. So there are certain uh, methods to circumvent this this um, this property, but this really makes it very difficult to decode this lock. Yeah, for for the method, so yeah, keep in mind to pull straight and to be precise at your numbers, and of course the the normal uh, things hold true. You you try to get feedback and you try to find information. You try to get information from the from the wheel by turning it and, and wiggling it and so on and so forth. There is this direct method that you pull it and turn it and see what it does. Maybe at some numbers it comes further apart than at other numbers. And then maybe make a chart. I do that. I make a chart. I would take notes and write down the numbers that are good. And um, so I continuously improve my numbers. And I don't forget good numbers when I am totally lost and I go back to uh, previous numbers that were good. Um, but you can also use the indirect method if the direct method doesn't work. So maybe I can show this to you. I uh, Let's say I turn away these numbers and let's say I don't know which number on the first wheel is the right one. I could try to see the impact of this wheel that it has on the next binder. Let's assume we know that this is the next binder. That it's also something you have to find out what's the next binder. So if I pull apart, I can pretty easily turn the, um, the second wheel, a second from the right side. But if I turn it to 6, uh, I do this now because I know that 6 is the right number. I pull it apart. You can see it's very hard to turn away from uh, from the numbers and that tells me that 6 is a very good number so maybe other numbers are also doing that um, <laughs> that means you don't know yet which number it is let's see if other numbers behave the same 7 for example not so much 8 not, not, not at all 9 not so much Zero, not so much. One, yeah, one is <laughs> causing a lot of uh, friction on the on the next wheel, so I would note one as well. Um, and so I would continue to find all the good numbers here on that wheel, and I would maybe guess which number I think is the best, and then I would continue with all the, the other wheels. And then you have to try it out and maybe luck is also involved and yeah 
As I said, I cannot give you a decoding of this lock because it would take forever and <laughs> it really hurts my, my fingers. But it was quite, actually it was quite interesting to decode this lock uh, for the very first time. Um, I heard music, I took my time and after half an hour it was open, I was really happy. But uh, you have to, well, you have to get into the lock. You have to really try to feel what's going on and understand and pull and sometimes make a little break and relax your fingers and remember to pull straight and to be precise on your numbers. Well, then sooner or later you get it open. <laughs> Not uh, not a method or not not a lock that I would recommend the, you to try out in the winter on a real situation on a bicycle where it's locked uh, at a very uh, cumbersome place. So I think the locking mechanism that we see here is really really good in um, in, in in real uh, situations on site, so to say. Um, that's not that's not a problem. I don't think that this lock gets decoded and the bike gets stolen. Also, it has five wheels and not the usual four wheels. But of course, the 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 cable itself is the is the, um, the interesting part. So uh, thieves would uh, break the cable or cut the cable rather than trying to decode this lock. So locking mechanism is pretty cool. Very interesting uh, things that they built into this lock to make decoding difficult and they did a great job in doing that. Yeah, so my job is done. The lock is open. The number is um, revealed. Uh, what was it? Ah, it was... Sim it was... 01126. Yeah, that was the number that she forgot and here it's open. Thanks for sending this lock to me and yeah, thanks to everybody else for uh, watching uh, this video. I hope you have enjoyed what you have seen and the lock will now get back in the package and sent back. Thanks and bye bye.